Welcome to the demonstration of sales and trading for an investment bank. In this short video, I'm going to be showing you how to operate the investment banking role. When you first log into the simulation, you'll have a blue screen like this. Okay, Each widget does slightly different things, and I'll take you through a journey of this as we go through. On the bottom left, you can see you'll have a list of all of your potential clients. As an investment bank, you need to speak to these clients. You can see I've got somebody with a flashing green message here who has asked for a trade. So this client has said, can I get a two-way for SPX 1000? Okay, now as an investment bank, you have to treat your clients well. So they've asked me for something. I will reply immediately by saying something along the lines of, sure, coming right up. Okay, here I'm going to use just the text version of communication to give you an example. So they've asked for a two-way trade, a bid and offer on SPX, and they've asked for a volume of 1000. So I click on SPX here, and I can see how that product has performed in the chart. I can probe the exchange. So if you remember, for a large block trade, you'll tend to get quite a wide spread, and that's just what the client is trying to avoid. Just to give an example, you can see that SPX is trading at $2,700. So that's per one share, SPX $2,700. If I wanted to execute that size trade in the exchange, I wouldn't be able to buy or sell at 2,700, but I'd have to buy at all the way at 3,114 or sell all the way down at 2,300. So there's a very wide spread for this large block trade. And that's why the hedge fund is coming to me. They don't want to pay this spread. They want to go much, much closer to this price of 2,712. Now, Assuming I think I can unwind this trade in, let's say, five different smaller parts, I can probe the exchange for um, one fifth of the size, which brings me to a much narrower spread, which is 2630 to 2799. And it's this bid and offer that I'm going to send to the client. So, how do I do that? Well, I put the bid in, so 2633, for example. I'm going to put the offer in. So there's the bid, 2633. I'm going to put the offer in, 2805. And I'm going to put the volume that they wanted, which is 1,000. And you can see that populates both fields. And I want this trade to be alive for 120 seconds. And I'm going to send them that quote, OK? And I'll follow up with, there you have it. Please execute. OK, so I've sent them the trade. So I can see here on my live chat quotes, this, this offer is available for another 100 seconds. Okay, So I must try and keep an eye on what's happening to the SPX. Ah, the client has bought. So here at the top, you can see that the client bought SPX. They've sent me a nice message saying thank you. And because they went long, because they bought, I have now gone short. And you can see here on my positions, my net position is minus 1,000, that means I've gone short 1,000 contracts of SPX, the average price that I've gone short at. What's the position value? Well, that's just uh, 1,000 times the actual uh, uh, cost of each share. Um, what's my unrealized P&L? So this is my profit at the moment that is unrealized. I haven't yet booked this profit. So one way that that's just a good way to review yourself as an investment bank, I've received 14,000 in commission, and I've got a good P&L because fortunately for me, just after the client executed on this trade, the SPX has moved lower. But I don't want to be in this trade for very long. Okay, Remember, look, you can see as the SPX starts ticking higher, I'm going to lose money here. So as an investment bank, there's two ways I can get out of it. One way is to go into the exchange, and start to buy back, because remember, I am short, I can start to buy back this position of risk in small chunks. Now, I don't want to do this in a large block trade, because I'll be getting a price that might be worse than where I've actually gone short. Okay, So if I look at doing it at 900, can you see for that 900 volume I've got left, I'd have to buy back at a much higher price. So I need to be careful and do this in smaller chunks, OK? So this is understanding liquidity. And I even here, actually, I'm taking this off at, uh, at a small loss. Can you see I'm pushing the market higher as I take this position off? So my P&L is being impacted here every time I push this off. 
and I've got 300 left to execute, so I can take this off the last 300. Uh, it's going to be quite expensive for me to do that, so I might just do 100 at a time and, and try and minimize the amount of money that I'm losing on this. So I've just got two more blocks to take off, one and two. And there I've managed to hold on to the commission, I've managed to maintain some positive P&L, but you could see how hard it was to get out of that position of risk before the price moved. Okay, so this is the objective, commission and managing risk. Let's go to my other client now and see if they want something else. So, uh, oh, here, they're asking for a price in 25,000 oil. So I'll say, sure, coming now. Okay. So 25,000 contracts in oil. Again, I can go to the Commodity tab. I'll click on Oil. Now, 25,000, if this was the client operating in the exchange without me, you can see that the reference price for oil is 60, but to execute this trade in the exchange, they'd be paying 69 or selling at 51. They don't want to do that. I think I can get out of this trade again in about five clips. So I'm going to see what the spread is like for 5,000 contracts. And you can see that's much closer, 59.2 to 60.8. So, so I, that's what I'm going to send them, that exact spread. So that's for 25,000. And that was for, I'll just check again, in the exchange for 5,000, we're looking at 59.3 on the bid. And the offer is 60.88. OK, and sent. So I've sent that to my client. Now, I don't know whether the client is going to go long or short. So let's see how they execute on this trade. Okay. Now, bearing in mind, once they do execute on this trade, as a bank, I'm going to have a position of risk. So can you see they have bought 25,000 contracts of oil, which now means I am short 25,000 contracts of oil. I've made a bit more commission, which is great. And it looks like I'm making a positive P&L, but I am short at $60.88. And if I try to take this all off at once in the exchange, I would have to buy it back at $68, which, is, which is, would, would lose me a lot more money than the commission I've made. So rather than go into the exchange this time with a smaller amount, I'm now going to go back to another client, and I'm going to try and I'm going to try and encourage them to go short if they want to go short, because if they sell oil, I will buy it back. So you might have seen there's a big drawdown uh, shown in oil event inventories now. That's actually going to be probably pushing oil higher. So you can see, actually, my P&L on this oil trade is, is in jeopardy. I need, to, I need to try and get out of this as, as, as quickly as I can. So two ways I can do that, either go to the exchange or here. I've got a, I've got a client saying I can make them a price for 25000 Now, I am short, so I want the client, I, I want the client to sell. So I'm going to make my bid as attractive as possible. Now, the one way I can do that is to put my bid right close to that exchange try. So 60, so that would be 60.34, can you see? Or 60.35. So this means the client can sell at a really nice price, but my offer I'm going to make quite unattractive, okay? I don't want the client to buy because I don't want to sell any more. So I'm going to send the quote, but I'm going to advise them and say, you can sell at 60.35. Great price. This is because I am short. So I don't mind. I'm going to tell them I am short. So offer you a better price than other banks. Because I'm already short, OK, so you can see that client has sold. They've done what I've wanted them to do. Because I was already short, them now selling means I get to buy it back. And phew, thank goodness I did. I bought it back just before the oil price spiked again. And you can see now, again, I've got no position of risk. So I've got no positions of risk. I've booked a positive P&L. 
and I've got a positive commission. And you can see here a nice comment, thank you, amazing crisis, my pleasure. Now, they did ask for another trade, didn't they? They uh, asked for Apple 10,000, so I'll tell them that's coming up. So Apple 10,000, now I've got no position in Apple, so I don't have to sort of move my bid and offer in a way to get the client to buy or sell. I should have no particular view. So in Apple, uh, they want 10,000. So if I look in the exchange, I can see that without me, you know, rather than being able to buy or sell at 166, they'd have to buy at 191 or sell at 141. So they're coming to me to not pay that widespread. Let's assume I can get out of this in uh, 10, 10 goes, okay, break it up into, into 10 contracts. So this is really the bid and offer I should be giving them because that's what I can get out of it in a smaller chunk and I can still hold on to their commission. So the uh, bid is 166 and the offer is 167. I'm going to be a bit more accurate, 166.7, 167.8 and that's for 10 thousand okay and I'll send that over tell them that they have it and then I can keep an eye on this live quote now depending on what they do okay so they've bought so I've now gone short can you see I'm short Apple now at 10,000 I've made more money in commission in order to get out of this trade as we already know I can go into the exchange and I can start to buy it back you can see I can start to buy back my position the problem with that is you'll see that it starts to push the price away from me and I'm already in negative territory now. So I've got 8,000 contracts left. Um, here I'm going to ask for uh, another client. I'm going to see if they're interested in Apple. Can I send you a quote for 8,000 Apple? Allowing you to sell at a great price. Remember, I want the client to sell. I want the client to sell because I'm already short. Can you see? So hopefully they're going to say yes, and I'll just prepare by clicking on Apple. Okay, And I don't need to probe the exchange here because I know that I want the client to sell. So I'm going to put the bid right next to the reference price, which is 168 52 okay now the offer I am going to actually probe here because the offer I want to be um, really about what they would get in the in, in the exchange which is 192 because I don't want them to buy okay they, they wouldn't buy at 192 because they might as well go to the exchange to do that that's for 8,000 and um, here we can say you can sell at 16852. OK, now that's actually moved. You can see that was actually slightly higher because because the market moved. It was actually slightly higher than even the market uh, price. So, so you see, I've got another very, very happy client. So by being able to move between these clients and adjust my bid and offer to reflect the position of risk that I've had at any time, I've been able to maintain a decent rate of commission and secure a positive P&L. So there's a lot to think about in this role. You must look after your clients. Try not to have any flashing green lights here. That means your client wants to speak to you. If you have no position of risk to work out what type of bid and offer to deliver your client, just remember, if they, for example, ask for 10,000 Apple, what they are trying to avoid is paying this wide spread. There's the price of Apple. It's 165. They don't want to buy at 190. So try and get your bid and offer as close to this one, as close to this reference price as possible. And normally you can assume you can unwind a trade in about five smaller blocks, I would say. So that's a good place to start, but it's not always the case. And be careful because when you unwind the trade, you can move the live market price against you. Therefore, another way to try and get out of a position of risk might be to go to another client, let them know that you have a position on, and therefore, if they trade in a way that helps you reduce your position of risk, both parties come out better off from the transaction. I hope you've found this short video useful. Please do free, uh, feel free to watch it again before you take the simulation. Um, good luck.